Okay, we'll start with RTK Kosovo. Uh, to Hina RTK, Kosovo Public TV, Mr. Stoltenberg, uh, you have emphasized several times that K4 would intervene in case that stability is jeopardized. What needs to happen apart from barricades for K4 to intervene, having in mind that Serbian military officials haven't excluded the fact that they would enter in Kosovo territory? And to Prime Minister Kurti, do you accept the qualification that both sides are held responsible for possible escalation? And if I may, the second question uh, regarding the possibility to become member of PFP, are you aware of political obstacles that consensus is, be, is needed for accepting Kosovo in PFP and we have four non-recognizers in NATO? Thank you. First of all, NATO uh, can do. I, th I think we have to start with the fact that NATO is in Kosovo with close to 4,000 troops. And that is uh, currently our biggest military presence outside NATO territory. And that demonstrates a very strong commitment to peace, to stability, uh, to, uh, uh, to the Western Balkans, to Kosovo. Uh, and also a very strong commitment by NATO allies reiterated at the NATO summit in Madrid, that uh, we will uh, uh, fulfill the UN mandate, which is uh, the basis of our presence in uh, Kosovo. So, uh, uh, well-trained, well-equipped, uh, 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 well-led uh, NATO forces from NATO allied countries and partners, just the presence of these troops helps to de-escalate and, uh, and uh, prevent uh, uh, violence. Second, when needed, we have demonstrated again and again that we can deploy and increase our presence, for instance, in the north, as we have done over the last uh, weeks. Uh, so, uh, so we can do uh, that again. We can further increase. And we also have, for instance, regular patrols of NATO uh, uh, okay for troops uh, also in the north. So we will, of course, our actions will be proportionate. They will be measured, but they will be clear and uh, and we will do what is necessary to uh, prevent uh, um, uh, escalation and, uh, and to ensure the uh, freedom of, uh, and the safety and the freedom of all the communities in, uh, in, uh, in Kosovo. So I think just what we have proven over so many years demonstrate what NATO is able to do uh, 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 when needed and, uh, and uh, when necessary. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, a brief answer. Um, well, uh, if one thinks of uh, two sides, then uh, on one side you have democratic state of Kosovo, we have uh, a professional police of our republic, and on the other hand, on the other side, you have uh, illegal structures of Serbia who have been turned into criminal gangs, who erected barricades, uh, nine out of 13 of them were erected within 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, in this sense, you can say that there are two sides, but uh, we should never lose moral center. We should never uh, abandon value-based policies. And that means that uh, uh, there should be uh, zero tolerance towards uh, crime and corruption, towards organized crime. Uh, from April last year until July this year, our police uh, conducted um, uh, altogether uh, uh, 39 uh, operations uh, with which they managed to arrest um, uh, dozens of uh, criminals uh, from the organized crime, which is multi-ethnic and multinational and cross-border, uh, many of them being Albanian, not only Serbs. Uh, but our police does not distinguish uh, criminals according to their uh, national identity, uh, only according to their acts and uh, behavior as individuals or as groups. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, we need all the support from uh, EU, uh, from NATO, from uh, democratic West in general, for a democratic country of uh, Kosovo. I know that there are four non-recognizers of our independence in uh, NATO. Uh, I know it is not easy, but I always work hard and insist on what is just and needed. Deutsche Welle. 
Hi, thank you very much. Um, Prime Minister Kurdi, one of the ways that you've been helping NATO already is with the U.S. hosting Camp Leo for Afghan evacuees. Um, I wanted to know if since the one year that you gave the United States is up the end of August, have you agreed to extend the camp since there are evacuees who do not have, who, who have not been given visas to go on to the United States? And will you accept these people to stay in Kosovo if they do not find third countries? And Mr. Secretary General, along those lines, um, is NATO doing anything to help the United States find homes for some of these former Afghan government officials, for example, who are not being granted visas to the U.S.? Is there something NATO can do to find them homes outside of America? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, it is our humanitarian duty to help uh, refugees, people who had to flee uh, due to hardships, due to catastrophes due to uh, coup d'etats, to regime change, and when their life and the lives of their family members are at risk. So it's a humanitarian duty. On the other hand, it is duty towards our uh, allies and partners and friends, uh, of course, first of all, United States, to help when they are in need. And uh, uh, we will continue to do so. Uh, my Minister of Internal Affairs is in uh, uh, close cooperation with U.S. Embassy and with uh, authorities, military authorities of the Camp Bonstil, uh, in order to uh, help all those people who are in need to the best of our abilities. Well, also since uh, since uh, since uh, the. Um the evacuation out of uh, Kabul, thousands of uh, people who have worked for NATO and NATO allies have been resettled uh, in many different uh, NATO uh, countries. Uh, and I know there are still some remaining ones, and NATO allies are still addressing that uh, together. Bloomberg. Thank you so much for the question, Natalia Drozjak from uh, Bloomberg. Prime Minister, I just wanted to ask, would you consider dropping uh, your plans to switch license plates uh, for the Serbs. And uh, Secretary General, not related to this topic on Ukraine, do you have any indication of who might be behind the blasts in Crimea that we saw yesterday and last week? Thank you. Uh, we have uh, made a decision on 29th of June this year to enable all Serbian citizens of Kosovo whose car plates are with uh, denominations of uh, year 1999, like legacy of the regime of Milosevic, uh, produced uh, in Serbia with uh, acronyms of towns in Kosovo to convert them into legal and legitimate uh, car plates, uh, RKS. Uh, to this end, we have uh, started a campaign to inform all Serbian citizens, but also created certain financial incentives. So during this conversion uh, of car plates, uh, Serbian citizens will not uh, have to pay excise and custom duty and a value added tax, which uh, for one car goes up to 5,000 euros. We will continue with the campaign of uh, information and uh, we will also implement uh, this uh, conversion of car plates. Uh, moreover, uh, Serbia itself agreed that uh, since uh, mid-January 2018, they are not going to produce such car plates in Serbia anymore and they are also not going to uh, force Serbs to use them. Uh, that's why four years after, uh, we are implementing something which is according to our constitution and law uh, legal, but on the other hand, also according to the Serbia's uh, pledges in Brussels uh, dialogue process, uh, their obligation. Therefore, we do not see uh, uh, any way around it, and I think it's for the benefit of uh, all of us to make everything legitimate and legal in our country. Uh, on, uh, on the explosions in uh, Crimea, uh, I cannot go into details about our intelligence and I would not speculate. What I can say is that, um, is that uh, Crimea uh, uh, is leg uh, illegally annexed by uh, Russia. Uh, they illegally annexed uh, Crimea in 2014. 
uh, Ukraine has the right for self-defense. NATO allies are uh, uh, providing support to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, of course, what we see now uh, is that uh, it is this senseless uh, war uh, which President Putin is responsible for, which is creating uh, uh, more and more uh, damage, more and more suffering uh, for the people of uh, Ukraine. And the, one of the most acute uh, uh, dangers we all face is now the situation around the nuclear power plant in Saporizhia, where uh, Russian troops have occupied and controlled uh, the facility for uh, several months, and they now use uh, the ground around the nuclear uh, power plant as a staging area, as, uh, as a platform to launch artillery um, attacks on Ukrainian forces. And this is reckless, it's, it is responsible, and it just uh, underlines the importance of allowing international uh, inspections uh, by uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and also uh, it uh, demonstrates the importance that uh, Russia should withdraw all its forces and not use a nuclear uh, power plant and uh, a ground around that power plant as a platform for launching military attacks against uh, Ukraine. Final question, Brussels Morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Leila Mossadid from Brussels Morning and Latitude. Uh, Secretary General, one year ago, uh, exactly, I asked you and I, I begged you to ask your alliance to not recognize the Taliban. And now, in one year later, uh, how do you see the situation in Afghanistan and uh, what is NATO position in a political and humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. And the second one, as a, a strongest military organization in the world, uh, like NATO, uh, the alliance of NATO, they are trying to start negotiation with Taliban again. This is the time, I think, not start weak negotiation with the terrorist group like Taliban because they still didn't cut their relation with Taliban, uh, with Al Qaeda, sorry. And uh, how do you see the, this negotiation, and uh, uh, which is happened last year? It is really unforgettable for everyone, especially for the people of Afghanistan. Are you going to pressurize the Taliban to accept to cut? their relation with Al-Qaeda and accept the women rights in Afghanistan and also give a little bit freedom for the people of Afghanistan and also stop genocide in Afghanistan. Are you going to talk with the alliance to pressurize the Taliban? Thank you. What we see now in Afghanistan is a tragedy for the Afghan uh, people, uh, and in particular for Afghan uh, women. And uh, uh, the first anniversary of uh, uh, Taliban's takeover uh, in Kabul uh, is a bitter uh, 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 occasion where we demonstrate uh, the brutality uh, of the Taliban uh, uh, rule. Uh, and it's also, of course, bitter for all those who worked for so many years for a democratic, free uh, uh, Afghanistan, uh, respecting human rights, including the rights of uh, women. Um, uh, what NATO allies are doing is that uh, they are stepping up their uh, humanitarian support, uh, the, the support for human rights groups, and, of course, also uh, uh, NATO allies uh, and the international community is putting significant pressure on the Taliban regime, uh, not least by imposing uh, severe uh, sanctions on the regime. Um, uh, uh, let me also add that, um, that uh, we are, um, uh, of course, we are, we, we, we are aware of that there have to be some severe lessons to be learned uh, after uh, all these years in Afghanistan. And I think um, the main or perhaps most important lesson to be learned is that uh, one thing is to uh, fight terrorism, which was the main reason we went into Afghanistan. Uh, we have achieved a lot in the fight against terrorism. I also think that the, the latest uh, strike against uh, Al-Qaeda leader um, 
shows that we can continue to fight terrorism also from outside Afghanistan. Uh, but it is a much more ambitious task uh, to move from fighting terrorism, which was the original purpose of the mission, uh, to uh, build a democratic, free uh, Afghanistan. Uh, that was an ambition expressed by NATO allies, by the UN, by the European Union, and also by NATO. And that proved to be extremely much more uh, difficult. So I think uh, uh, we achieved a lot in the fight against terrorism, but we have seen that uh, in our efforts to create a more stable and uh, free and democratic uh, Afghanistan, uh, what we have seen in the last uh, year is actually uh, a huge setback and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a tragedy uh, for Afghanistan, but also for all those allies and partners who worked so hard to create a more uh, peaceful and democratic Afghanistan. Thank you very much. This concludes this press conference. Thank you.